So we got all the symmetries finished. So there are a lot of identities we're not going to use. We're just going to go with the three Pythagorean identities you've seen. And at some point, at the very end of the quarter, we will use the half angle formulas. So I'll write them down now. You won't need them again until like the last week or so. So first one, Pythagorean identity, co squared plus sine squared equals one. Tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. And cotangent squared theta plus one equals cosecant squared. These can be a little bit tricky to remember. So you can get the third by coing the second. So I have a quick question. I don't know, you might have said it, I might have been distracted. But you said that you're writing this now, but we won't use it until the end of the quarter. The other two that I write, we won't use till the end of the quarter. Yeah, and actually I don't know that we're gonna use these very much either, these three. Yes. Okay, that's all I need. I was like it, it may be a while until we use these identities and the next two that are right down. Okay. We're going to use the uh, values quite a bit. So wherever those are, uh, let's see, our first quadrant values, and then I could ask you any quadrant. So the values are going to be used very soon. But in terms of the uh, Pythagorean identities, we won't use those for a while. I don't think. And the half angle formula is the other. And that is co squared theta equals one plus cos two theta over two. And the other one is sine squared equals one minus cos two theta over two. For that third Pythagorean identity, when I say coing the second, if you read the second one, it's tangent squared plus one equals secant squared, and if you just co tangent squared and cosecant squared, you get the third line right there. So if you can remember the first two, you can get the third one for free. Now we're going to look at some inequalities that we have not looked at in pre-calculus. So these are not called identities because they have less than or equal signs in them, so they're not uh, called identities. So for any angle theta in radians, I think I said we're going to use radians almost the entire quarter, so you can always assume angles are in radians, unless it says degrees. So here are two identities. that we're going to use. So sine theta is always going to be between negative theta and positive theta. And a sort of similar one for cosine. So there are some obvious aspects of these inequalities that, or some obvious values of theta that these will be true for. What is the absolute biggest sine theta is ever going to get? It's the biggest value sine theta can ever output. One. So when theta equals one, this is definitely true. And the same thing is true when theta does negative one. 
or the, the smallest sign can ever be is negative one. So it's true when theta is bigger than one or equal to one. It's also true when theta is less than uh, negative one. So what about in between? All we really have to worry about is quadrant one and two. That's where theta is between negative one and one. So why is that? Just think pi over two is approximately about 1.57. All right, something like that. 3.14 cut in half is close to 1.57. And negative theta over two is close to negative 1.57. So where's positive one and negative one? They'll be somewhere right about there. Not quite 1.57. So we only really need to worry about quadrant one and four, where theta is close to zero. So let's look in quadrant one and four. What in the world's going on with this inequality? So in quadrant one, our inequality is sine theta less than theta. So we're gonna draw in some measurements here. What does sine theta measure on this graph? Of course, theta is going to be the angle that we're rotating. What does sine theta measure on this graph? What? Well, it's, it looks like I drew theta pretty close to maybe pi over 4 or pi over 6, but that'll be the y distance or the y coordinate of the point. So this vertical distance is sine theta. And let's think about theta itself. We usu we're used to thinking of theta as an angle. But when we measure in radians, the angle is the same as the arc length, the length of the curved part right there. So that curved arc that I drew in green is actually theta, the length of that curved arc is theta. Which one is bigger, just using intuition? When theta is positive in the first quadrant, one of these is obviously bigger than the other. Theta is bigger, goes the same vertical distance, but it has a little bit of horizontal movement as well. So it's always going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, the only time they're going to be equal is when theta actually equals zero. They'll both be zero in that case. So right from this graph, we can write down sine theta less or equal to theta when theta is between 0 and we don't need to quite go up to pi over 2, but it would be true if we went all the way to pi over 2. So sine theta is less or equal to theta when theta is small and positive. Let's look in quadrant four now. So when theta is between negative pi over two and zero, we'll do something very similar down here. I'll use the same colors. Make the angle a little bit different sized. We'll go right to here. That's theta. Now this vertical line right here is now sine theta, and theta is the arc measurement right here. And just looking at this, we get something similar, except our intuition's a little bit off. We want to say, at least I want to say that theta is bigger than sine theta. But the problem is they're negative. So you, it's true that absolute value of theta is bigger than the absolute value of sine theta. And that's the way we want to think here. So let's write absolute value sine theta. Let's equal to absolute value of theta. 
absolute value is useful here because I don't want to think about negatives because the bigger negative is actually less. So we'll just write in absolute values and then we can just look at length instead of worrying about, oh, it's going down instead of going up. And that was true when theta is between negative pi over 2 and 0. Am I allowed to throw in absolute values up here when theta is between 0 and pi over 2? Everything was already positive. So it's not going to change anything to throw absolute values in. All right, so we just figured out sine theta is less than equal to theta, no matter what, when theta is between uh, negative pi over 2 all the way to pi over 2. What about the other side of the inequality, the greater than or equal to negative theta? Let's think about that. So this we can do with some algebra. So I'll do a really fast algebra review on inequalities. So if absolute value of x less than or equal to 1 on a number line, that means x is between negative 1 and 1. That's what absolute value uh, x less than or equal to 1 means. It's not any bigger than 1 and not any smaller than negative 1. We could rewrite it with some inequalities, and it takes two inequalities to do so, but you can actually rewrite it with a single inequality, or I should say a pair of inequalities written out together. So this says x is more than negative 1 and less than positive 1. If you really want to know the secret algebra trick to doing this, the first stop, you put the plus or minus on the x. So you have two equations, minus x less than or equal to 1 and x less than or equal to 1. Minus x less than or equal to 1, I'll multiply by negative 1. And we have x greater than or equal to negative 1. And flip it around, put the small thing on the left. You have minus 1 less than or equal to x, and x less than or equal to 1. So you can do it algebraically if you're very careful. And the key to doing it algebraically is put the plus or minus where the absolute value used to be, not on the other side. that back on the screen. All right. So now, that was all a review. Now we're going to summarize all this, both of these. So when theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, we get sine theta absolute value less than or equal to absolute value theta. I want to eliminate the absolute value on the sine theta, so I have plus minus sine theta less than or equal to theta. So we have two inequalities, negative sine theta less than or equal to absolute value of theta, and sine theta less than or equal to absolute value of theta. So the first one is multiply by negative 1. Makes both sides change sign, but also reverses the inequality. And writing the little one on the left. And the right side, I'm just going to rewrite sine theta, let's go to absolute value of theta. So I have sine theta is bigger than negative theta and smaller than theta. So we can throw them into one. And we have that. So sine theta is between negative theta and positive theta. And that will show our first inequality right there. So it was already true when theta was big. 
So we just showed for theta small. Now for the second one, I won't go through the full proof like we just did for sine. It's pretty similar, one minus cos theta. I'll do this in red. Where in the world's one minus cos theta on this? So in the graph, what does cosine theta usually measure? X. Measures our x. So where is one minus cos theta? So normally this measurement's cosine theta right here. One minus cos theta measures, what's the difference between one and this measurement? So it's the little bit left over. So this little measurement right here is one minus cosine theta. And you can see from the graph that that straight measurement is going to be less than the theta uh, curved measurement right there. Because this is just the x distance, whereas theta has to go up the y also. So no matter what, that 1 minus cos theta is less than theta if theta is positive, And you get something really similar down here. 1 minus cos theta is going to be less than theta when theta is negative. And you just be careful with your absolute values. You get the same, uh, same situation. So we're not going to go through that proof. But we'll just go with the second inequality right there.